during no trip. Just, just a moment. And uh, uh, his sister Mary and her husband Rick Huss, they with all the trust on all the parcels, all the three parcels, undivided. All right, very good. But, yeah. So then, just to be specific, you'll be speaking um, exclusively about your interest and your husband's interest in the three parcels, correct? Yes. All right, very good. Uh, I tender Miss Golfer Cross. Thank you. Mr. Taylor, I assume, will reserve that spot for you. Oh, thank you. I'm Wally Taylor. I represent the CR Club. And um, so you have three parcels, is that correct? Yes. Uh, can we uh, bring up the uh, KMZ map? And does this map show the three parcels? Well, it doesn't look like the one I'm used to, but I'm used to the KMZ one that had each one separate. But anyway, there's a North 40, a Middle 40, and a South 40. Yeah. Looks like we might have it there. Uh, okay. And it looks like there are some buildings just to the southwest of the the bottom parcel? That's correct. The family sell that uh, acreage to a young couple. So, so someone lives there? Yes. And it uh, looks like the pipeline would go just immediately to the west of that uh, farmstead or, or those, uh, that residence. Is that That's correct? That's correct. That's correct. And they also have a well on that property, not too far from the pipeline, on the acreage property. So. Um, so you have the well. Is that yours, or does that belong to? It, it was purchased by this couple. Okay. And then the pipeline. It looks like, as far as being on your property, goes up the west side of the property. That's right. Most of it on the west side is on uh, the Shelses property, the neighbors to the west. And there's a little jot just up in that corner on our property. Right, and then it goes on up. Yes, north. up through the next two parcels. Yeah. Actually, goes south, doesn't it? <laughs> because it's it's coming down to catch nothing all plant south of you, correct? Well, the pipeline depends on you know it's coming from the north to the south, in my estimation, on the west side. Okay. <laughs> um, it looks like you have some terraces. Yes. Is this highly erodible land? Please. Is this highly erodible land? Yes, it's very hilly. Um, and the terraces are there because of that condition? That's correct. They were put in in 1997. Would the construction of the pipeline impact those terraces? Yes. In what way? Well, it would go right through them, and then that alters the drainage on the farm. Um, there's a kind of a curved line that goes generally east and west, um, about a fourth or a third of the way down from the top of your property, from the north of your property. What is that? That's a creek. And... Um, Does that creek have water in it all the time? At times, when there's heavy rain, yes. Yeah. And that's why they put tiles to the south of it and east just a little bit. 
to help with that, you know, because I'm becoming a wetland. Okay. How much timing do you have on that property? Well, I spent a year there with my children while my husband was over in uh, Vietnam, um, Korea. I believe that's in my pre-file testimony. I told how uh, we spent a whole year there and got to know the grandparents really well. And uh, we had lived overseas for five years prior to that in Okinawa, Japan. And the kids had never been on a farm before. They never had a animal or pet because we could never have one. And they got to see their parents working on, their grandparents working on the farm, uh, harvesting the corn, digging potatoes, uh, picking apples off the trees, and uh, watching the grandmother take care of her flowers. She was very good at growing flowers. And uh, I guess I would just hate to see any of these experiences not experienced by other families who could be in my situation uh, with their husband being overseas for a year. And, uh, you know, if there was a pipeline at that time, I don't think I would have wanted to be on that farm, you know, and, and be out in the yard. And I we used to walk in the fields and I just wouldn't feel comfortable because of the fact there could be a rupture. Could you? Do you grow corn and beans on that property? Excuse me? Do you grow corn and beans on that property? Yes. Rotated. Um, as you see the route of the pipeline on the KMZ map, is that where you understood from Summit that it was going to be? That's the only map we've received, the only maps. So we haven't had any contact with them, so... So you never talked to any land agents or other representatives from Summit? No. We knew we didn't want a pipeline, and I didn't want to have anything to do with them. Okay. Did they try to contact you? A few times by phone, but uh, if they wanted to talk to me, I just refused. we go to the bottom of the parcels again? Yeah. Um, with respect to the, what you call the farmstead that you sold, um, do you have concerns about the safety for those people? Yes, definitely. And the neighbors that are on the other side of the road there, which is F-16, uh, pretty busy road, and there's another neighbor to the south, the Schultz's, of course, up to the west, and in this area, there's just families that are very close, and there's another family that lives to the east. Okay. So, so where would the closest emergency uh, response personnel come from? That would be in Erling, which is about five miles away. Okay. Is that a volunteer yes. department? Yes, yes. And the, uh, if you would need really, really um, care, like you would have to go to Consul Bluffs most likely because then even the hospital in Harlan wouldn't have the equipment needed. And Consul Bluffs would be about 60, 70 miles away probably. Um, in the past a couple of years or so, what have you done to... Um, address the impending uh, pipeline project? You mean, what did I all do to try to uh, talk against it? Yeah. I spent hours and hours and hours from the day that the letter arrived in August of 2021 researching. So um, the day after the letter came, I got online and started doing research. So before they even had the first meeting in Shelby County, I knew exactly that I didn't want the pipeline because I had read how dangerous it was, all the damage it causes to soil. And when I went to the meeting in Harlem, it seemed like they always avoided, uh, you know, very serious questions about the safety. Like, oh, it'll be okay, it's just another pipeline. So, but I didn't agree with that. So, And I keep researching to this day. 
and I'm still against it. And I was going to say here that, you know, after listening to many of the testimonies of the pipeline affected landowners, a summit witness testimonies, which evaded the most serious aspects of the project, and the testimonies of expert witnesses such as Jeff Boner of CAP CO2, I am still totally against the hazardous, supercritical CO2 pipeline. If there is a technology to capture CO2 right at an ethanol plant, turn it into methanol, and then be shipped away in rail cars, why should hundreds of miles of precious Iowa farmland be torn up for the pipeline taking the CO2 to North Dakota to be buried in the ground? And it seems like in all the research I've done and the dealings people have had, it, Summit is a very sketchy company. They refuse to release their plume dispersion model. I think that everyone should be informed how far a toxic plume could travel. During the South Dakota proceedings... Objection. Go ahead, state your objection. I'll move to strike the response as unresponsive. The question is, what have you done to research this? Okay. Well, this was still part of my research. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mr. Jordan? Well, I... I'd say I'd, I'd think it was responsive up to that point, but maybe Mr. Taylor could move on to the okay. next question. Thank you. Um, has the um, specter of eminent domain um, had an impact on your um, consideration about your land? Yes, it's been a very serious concern and very upsetting because it's not for a public use, it's not for a public convenience, it's just a very wealthy company wanting to make billions of dollars using our land and taking our tax credits besides that. And then the fact we still have to keep paying the property taxes on those easements. So it's very sad. Did you ever look at the easement summit was proposing that the landowner sign? Objection, Your Honor. I'd state the objection. This form testimony goes on for pages and pages about what the concerns about the proposed voluntary easement are. This is asked and answered. Thank you. I hadn't asked her about the contents of the easement. I just asked her if she... Uh, I was aware of the easement. Okay, maybe you can relate that to your specific question of the testimony. Did you um, understand or look at the easement that someone was proposing um, that the landowner signed. That's all I'm asking. Uh, objection. You guys aren't going to make this afternoon easy, are you? Same objection. It would be very difficult for this witness to write pages and pages of testimony critiquing that easement if she hadn't seen it. It's asked and answered. Mr. Taylor. I'll move on. Well, I was going to say one more thing. I have seen it. <laughs> but they didn't come to way later because they never had our correct address. Those are the only, that's the only piece of mail we ever received. Was that envelope containing two easements for three parcels of land. And they were, both of them, full of errors. So, I didn't see it and I was shocked by what all I read. Yeah. The forever easements, the temporary easements. How long is forever? How long is temporary? So... Have you submitted objections and comments to the IUB docket? Many, many. Okay. So those will be part of the record? Yes. <clears throat> um, since you filed your direct testimony, has Summit said or done anything that causes you to um, change any of your testimony or... Uh, that you believe uh, 
things someone has said are incorrect? I just think that they've caused us so much turmoil in our lives. And as I um, have told many people about my husband, uh, he had served 20 years in the United States military. 13 of those years were overseas. One in Vietnam. He ended up being exposed to Agent Orange. And because of that, he had to have two surgeries, two years of chemotherapy, and continues to live with the idea that it may come back. And about the same time, this letter came up telling us about taking our land and using eminent domain. And uh, it was a really difficult pill to swallow, uh, you know. And I think only, not only he, but all the veterans who have ever served should not have to deal with anything like this after all that they fought for. And, uh, you know, just in the back of your mind to realize that these forever easements, we don't know who's owned them, who owns them, uh, and that there could be foreign countries involved like North Korea, China, Saudi Arabia. And after all the years the, uh, the military guys gave of their lives to realize that parcel by parcel, state by state, our country could be overrun by foreign governments. So, and it's just, after you have a critical disease like that, it's just very hard to take. So are you concerned about the financial um, structure of Summit and the interest behind Summit? Objection, Your Honor. Asked and answered. This is well addressed in the written testimony. It's the same in every Jordy landowner testimony, including screenshots of the various LLCs and a discussion of foreign interests. Mr. Taylor? I was just following up on what she testified to just a minute ago. this redirect appropriate, Mr. Taylor. Appreciate your position on on, on redirect and pre-filed testimony, and, and it's noted, um, but we need to really try to stick to... I have no further questions. Thank you. Ms. Colas? Yes? Good afternoon, Ms. Gall. I just have a few questions. Good afternoon. Uh, you share the these three parcels with other family members, correct? Yes. Uh, do you cash rent those? Uh, you have a tenant that uh, you receive cash rent for? Yes, we do. I have a question. Uh, you parceled or you sold off a, a, a small section of your land. Uh, do the people that live there or purchased it, do they farm your land? No, the people on the acreage do not farm the land. They uh, live a few miles away. Also, to the west of your property, of your three parcels, does your tenant also farm that land? No, as far as we know, the tenant just farms, you know, the acres that are on his farm, and then the 141 acres on our farm. Has he, so, has he uh, indicated any concern? about the pipeline and his equipment and how it went on fear? Well, we haven't really talked with him, but I'm sure he does. And, and I fear for his life because a lot of the farm machinery is so huge and it's bound to happen that they're going to run over and um, rupture the pipeline. The terracing of, is of a huge concern to you with relationship to the equipment then, correct? Well, I'm talking about the danger to the pipeline when he runs over it with his huge farm machinery. Okay. And he's been a wonderful renter. We've had it since 1997, uh, 1996 rather, February of 96. And in March of 96, he signed the rental agreement. He's been a wonderful renter. My last question is, I see there's a lot of development around your parcels. Is there, are there any other easements for, get, for water, gas, or electric or anything? No, there aren't. There is an electric line that runs down the west side of the fence, and then it turns at the bottom of the 
beginning also toward the Schultz property. So is that close to the pipeline? Yes, it is. Can you show us on the KMZ map, please? Would be coming down here and then going over here. So it's virtually within the easement, the 50, the 50 feet if the easement area of the pipeline. Most likely. To me, it's just way too close. And that's the electrical, correct? Yes. No further questions. Thank you. Ms. Ryan. Thank you. Good afternoon. I just have a couple of questions. You already answered most of what I was going to ask. Okay. Um, you indicated that you inherited this land from your parents. Is that correct? From my husband's parents. In 90, 1995, they were both killed in a tragic car accident. And all of their assets were given to the six children. And uh, three of us siblings decided to buy the farm. So my husband and me... Uh, Gerald and Nancy and Rick and Mary Huss. And do you have plans to pass it on to your children? Well, if not ours, to one of the other couples, you know, if they would ever decide to put a little acreage on there or decide to farm, yes. You envision keeping it in the family? Yes. Um, are there any other long-term plans specific to this property that... Uh... Uh, no, just to, so that our rancher takes good care of the land because uh, I kind of feel indebted to my uh, mother and father-in-law for letting us, you know, live on the farm with them for that year. It wasn't easy for them to be retired farmers, and here they have some, two grandchildren and a daughter-in-law living with them. So I want to keep it nice for them, because I learned a lot about the farm from them. And I wanted to follow up on a little bit of your discussion about your husband's service. Um, do you know when he entered the military if he took an oath? In 1966. Do you know anything about what kind of oath he would have taken? What kind of, what sort of what? Oath. Oh, sure, to preserve and defect the United States of America. Would that include the Constitution? Yes. Would that include property rights? Yes. Do you think property rights are an important part of this proceeding? I think it's very important and probably the main reason we're all here because we're fighting for our land that uh, belongs to us rightfully and no one has the right to actually steal it from us because when eminent domain is used to obtain land, uh, it's usually for, say, a water line or electric line, something that all people in the whole area can use. So it's for convenience and use. But this pipeline... Is not for any of our use. It's just to transport some hyper, some supercritical CO2 to be buried up in North Dakota. It's such a waste of money in my mind. Thank you. That's all I had. Ms. Hank? Hello, Ms. Skull. Chris Hike, a landowner. Um, just have one question. As it relates to communication that you've received, um, you mentioned uh, you had no contact with summit representatives. That's correct. Did you receive from the IUB a postcard asking if you would like to participate virtually or in person? No, we did not. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jordy, are you good? Uh, briefly, can we look at the KMZ, please? Um, okay, now, ma'am, do you see that on, you've got the 340s there on the southernmost 40, you see how the pipeline uh, proposed route is to the west, and then it angles in and clips a corner on that southern 40 there, do you see that? Yes. H has anyone ever explained to you in writing or orally why the proposed pipeline didn't just keep continuing north and why at that location it cuts over and affects your three parcels. No, I haven't. I've wondered that myself because, you know, most of it is on our neighbor's property. 
And they don't want the pipeline either, the, the neighbors to the west, the Schultz family. So I don't know why, <laughs> I don't understand it at all. Now, when you say the Schultz family, do they are they and your neighbors uh, on all three of these 40s to the west? Just to the west, just... Just the southernmost one? Yes. Okay, and who, who's, who are your neighbors on the two northern 40s, do you know? Well, I'm not sure at this point in time. It used to be a, a Mr. Finken that lived there, but I'm not sure now. Okay. And, and then if, if we could just uh, get a measurement from the, that home to the, the pipeline, please. Does it say 704? Thank you. So, and, and you said this used to be part of your uh, land in your husband's family. Did you retain a first right of refusal, or was that sold outright, that acreage? Well, the family just decided to sell it. So. Okay. All right. But, but there's also a well on that property not too far from, oh, probably about where that black roofed little machine chat is behind that. So that would also be in danger from not only our pipeline to this top, but also from Schultz's part. You know, because it goes from the land slopes from north to south, so the wind is probably going to blow it down. So double whammy on the acreage and that well. So if there was a rupture, that well could be contaminated. And all, that's the water that they depend on, on the acreage. So if it would turn into carbonic acid, it wouldn't be a good thing. Now, I, I, if we could zoom out, please. I, I noticed that you also have um, fairly extensive uh, terraces there, and without going through a bunch of questions on that, do, do you share the same concerns that Martin uh, Mayher had discussed about relative to his terraces? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then was there anything... Uh, further related to the cross-examination questions you were asked that you needed to clarify? Well, still getting back to the company that, uh, I don't know, they, to me, they haven't proven the four areas that they're supposed to prove. One is to comply with all rules and regulations. Two, that the pipeline will pose no threat to the environment, the social conditions, or the economic conditions of the people that are living there. Three, that the pipeline will not affect the health, wealth, Objection. Go ahead and state your objection. The move to strike is unresponsive. Uh, this is not a response to any particular cross-examination question. It's just a free-for-all direct exam question. Mr. Jordy? That might be true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the um, commander is appreciated. Go ahead, <laughs> Mr. Jordy. Um, Ma'am, I, I think your pre-filed testimony was very extensive, and so I don't I don't have anything further at this time. Thank okay. you. Thank you. I guess I just wanted to add one more thing, if I could. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> okay. there is no more questions. So All right. We appreciate you coming. We appreciate your testimony. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you for listening. We would call Cornelius Schelling, please.